Hi, I'm Frederick Fortier. I'm a software engineer at Enigma. Today, I want to show you how to create and backtest a cryptocurrency trading strategy with Catalyst. We'll refer to the mean reversion simple strategy contained in the examples folder of the Catalyst project. This particular IDE is PyCharm, but it's not a requirement to build strategies. Catalyst originates from Zipline, which is a well-known platform for trading equities and futures. Its API is very similar. It differs only in areas where cryptocurrency-specific constructs are required. I will now walk you through the structure required to build a strategy on Catalyst. The initialize function is invoked at the start of a strategy. It contains a single parameter, context. Context represents the state of your strategy. Here, in the initialize function, I will simply assign some attributes to, to the context, which can be used later in the business logic of our strategy. One of the variables that I'm going to assign is NeoUSD, which is the currency pair that we're going to trade in this algorithm. Next, we have handle data, which is called once per frame. A frame represents a time period. It could be either the last minute of a day or each minute of the day, depending on the data's frequency specified when starting the algorithm. The two parameters are context, which is the state of the strategy, and data, which allows us to access price data about our selected currency pairs. Finally, we have the analyze method, which contains two parameters, the context again, and a performance data frame containing key performance indicator about the current strategy. I use it to generate a graph with matplotlib. Now there are at least two available interfaces which we can use to run this algorithm. This example uses the run algorithm function, but I also wrote the equivalent catalyst command, which can be invoked from the command line. We're allocating 10,000 units of the base currency US dollars to our strategy. The data frequency is minute, which means that a frame will correspond to a minute. The first frame will occur on October 1st, and the last frame will be on November 10th. The price data of our simulation will come from Bitfinex. This is also where we're mapping our initialize, handle data, and analyze callbacks. Note that the run algorithm function takes slightly different parameters in live mode. We'll cover that in a future video. Now that we've defined the parameters of our strategy, let's go back to handle data and take a closer look at the business logic that we will use for trading. First thing that we do here is determine whether the current frame is the first of the day, and if so, we reset our trading today flag. This will come in handy later when we decide whether or not to initiate a trade. Next, we use our data object to request bars of historical data about our NEO USD currency pair. A bar is composed of a series of transactions. Requesting the close is the equivalent of requesting the price of the last transaction in that time period. We're interested in 50 bars with the 15 T or 15 minutes frequency. This would be the equivalent of looking at a 15 minutes chart when doing technical analysis. The RSI will be our trading signal. We'll buy if it's oversold and sell if it's overbought. TALib is a C library with a Python interface which can compute dozens of technical indicators like the RSI. We're using a time period of 14, which is a conventional measure. Now we also need the current price to make our trade decision. Note here that we're requesting both the close and the volume. When more than one fill is requested, Catalyst returns a data frame instead of a series. We can then get a price series simply by referencing close as a column of our data frame. Here, we're calculating the price change and requesting units of cash in the base currency. Note that the Catalyst API allows us to access any metrics about the portfolio or current executed transactions. We are now feeding this data snapshot to the record method. This will later result in a data frame with a time series index, allowing us to build performance metrics and charts. 
It's important to record all the data relevant to statistics before exiting the function. Next, we have a series of three gates which would exit the function if we're unable to trade. First, we exit the strategy if it already traded today. This is just to ensure that we're not trading too much and paying unnecessary commission. Then, we exit if we have open orders. Orders don't always execute immediately. We don't want a queue of order, which might force us to use leverage. Finally, we verify that the currency pair can trade. It can usually trade on cryptocurrency exchanges, which run 24-7, but sometimes there are some special holds which prevent trading for specific currencies. We now request the amount of NEOUSD in our portfolio. Note that the Catalyst API makes it very easy to request any data about the portfolio required to make trade decisions. Now for the trading signals. If the RSI is oversold, meaning lower than 30 in our case, and we hold no position of the currency, we execute an order of 100% of our cash. If this is the first transaction of our strategy, we will order $10,000 worth of NEO at the market price corresponding to this frame. We're doing market orders just for the sake of simplifying this demo, but Catalyst supports other kinds of orders such as limit orders. If the RSI is overbought or higher than 80, we'll do the opposite move. We'll liquidate our entire position of NEO and return to all cash. This concludes the business logic portion of our trading strategy. We can now take a brief look at the analyze function. I won't perform a detailed walkthrough here. While the code might seem intricate, it's mostly aimed at creating a chart from a statistics data frame. This kind of operation is already well documented. Python is a popular language for graphs and for data science. Matplotlib has good documentation in various videos surrounding it. It's time to run our strategy now. Since I'm using the run algorithm interface, I can run it directly from my IDE using the Python process. The only requirement is to use the Python environment in which we installed Catalyst. I typically use virtual environment for this. If you pay attention to the log output, you'll see that the strategy is currently running. Uh, it's buying and selling on occasions. I've accelerated the speed for the purpose of this video. Running this strategy in backtest will normally take a few minutes. Using minute data frequency takes more time to backtest, but produces much more precise output compared to using daily data. Now that we're done running the simulation, we can take a look at our graph and try to draw some conclusions. Judging by the percent change chart towards the bottom, we can determine that our strategy was profitable in that time period compared to a buy and hold strategy for the same currency pair. We saved ourselves some risk by staying in cash during some of the downtrends while capitalizing on enough of the uptrends to make a profit. Obviously, the strategy would not have been profitable if the price of the currency pair rose at a fast pace, as it's often the case with cryptocurrencies, but it seems to do well with a high amount of volatility and a fairly stable price throughout the timeline. We can look at the arrows on the RSI chart to confirm that it bought and sold uh, when we intended to. Obviously, in this case, the green arrow represent a buy and the red arrow represent a sell. We can also take a look at our cash line to make sure that it's not tapping into any kind of margin or leverage. Everything looks good according to this chart. Uh, if we wanted to, we could do a much deeper analysis of our performance, but we're going to keep it simple for the purpose of this demo. Please check out our website or join our Discord channel for more information and access to a community of people with the same interests. Thank you.